Okay. Um, so Route to PA um, is an acronym for Raising Open User-Friendly Transparency Enabling Technologies for Public Administrations which is a quite a mouthful, but this is what we get for working with 11 other partners, most of whom are researchers, right? And today I'm going to be walking you through um, two of the tools that they have built to promote um, interactions between open data users and um, open data publishers, which in this case is governments, and then also tools they've built around CCAN to um, promote transparency. Um, but before we start, I'm just going to show you a short, very short video. Um, well, so that's the first of several videos that we are looking to create just to help people understand um, and unpack what all of Route2PA is. Um, so the first tool I'm going to walk you through is um, the Transparency Enhancing Toolset, which is built on SICAN. Um, and so what this is, is um, a platform um, that pulls data sets from various um, government platforms um, and sources and puts it in one place so that people can easily search for this data um, and, and um, use it for whatever reason they want to. Um, so the interface that you see is very new. It's just a week old. Um, it was a bit cluttered before, so this is a bit cleaner and it's really good. Um, so let's search for anything really. Let's search for, um, say, transport. So um, whatever keyword you search for, um, it, it, it looks at um, the metadata for all the data sets that are available on the platform and um, the, well, gives you results and you can easily filter um, the results. This is also a new feature, the refining feature. So you can feature, you can filter by the format if you just want CSV files. Um, and if you want um, data on transport only, for example, and for what year, say 2016, for example, and there's nothing there, so um, this is a bit weird. Um, yeah, anyway, so if you pick out any data set, um, it's supposed to then um, analyze the data for you and you can view it as a chart. This feature doesn't work currently, I've tested it. Um, they say it works, but they seem to not have updated it. But then you can view it um, as tables and in whatever other formats it's available in um, for now. So it gives you a description which the user, well, the public administration will have specified um, when they put it up. And metadata, which is really easy to read right now, um, it's, it's quite slick at the moment. Um, but then it's also like there are a few things they need to improve on and so if you guys spot anything just let me know and I'll raise it with them. Um, and one really cool thing that it now does is it integrates with uh, one of the other tools that they've built which is the social platform for open data and which I'll talk to you about um, in a bit. So it tells you how many discussions um, are going on around this data set currently. And as you can see, there's none at the moment. And you, if you want to be the first, then you can start that discussion. And it takes you to the social platform for open data. And if you're logged in, then you're able to create a room and start a discussion. And I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> 
Um, so this front end, um, it's based on Second, like I said. The front end um, has been for a while based on WordPress, um, but they've now moved to using Python and Django. Um, they had a few e issues working with WordPress and it limited them in some ways. So they're now working with Python, which is really cool if you ask me. Um, so that's the transparency and enabling tool set. For now, what they've done is they don't want, they don't have one um, central one. What they do is for each of the five pilots that they have, they have um, a different um, setup, um, different second instance for them. So each pilot has its own, and they haven't collated all of them into one yet, but they are looking to do that this year. So hopefully it will be easier to search for data not just from, say, Dublin, but also from the other four can the other three countries. So this will be really cool. Um, so I currently am using the one for Dublin because it's in English. <laughs> the others are in French and Italian. Um, this is the easiest to work with and show, showcase. So the second tool is the social platform for open data. So while well, the first one um, is primarily so that um, well can advocate for transparency within public administration, so allow them to upload data onto these platforms and for users to see this data and um, see details in them and use this data. The second one allows for users and um, now the public administrators to interact. Um, so currently, um, the registration feature is disabled, and if anyone wanted to so test drive, t test drive the system, then you'd have to, well, let me know, and then I'll ask them to create it for you. It's not perfect, but um, I think because they're not live yet, they are just doing that so they know who's on the platform um, and why they're on it. So I have an account, so once you sign in, um, it takes you to, yeah, a platform that looks uh, a lot like um, most of the social media platforms we've been on. The difference here is that now the basis um, and the basis for interactions is open data. And um, they have this, they used to call this the open wall, but they now just call it what's new. It's where um, they collect um, updates from all the users, everything that has been going on, um, and then also show you users, the ones that are online. Well, looks like I'm alone. Um, and all the others. Then you can see activities on something they call Agora. And Agora is just, um, well, it's Greek for public um, gathering, gathering place. So it's just a public space where um, everything um, that happens can be seen by everyone. So it's just um, a public space and people create um, things that are called rooms. Each of these um, squares and rectangles you see is a room. And what a room is, is um, like a discussion area on a certain topic. So say we wanted to talk about um, public bins, say, in Dublin. So what you do is say, add a room, and say we want to talk about um, trash bins in Dublin. And then, um, well, let's just put random text and then submit. And then we'd see it at the very top. Um, so what happens with the colors is the topics that are not discussed so much are blue in color. So they are sort of like the cold topics. And um, the colors change. The, the more, um, well, the more discussed a topic is, then the brighter it is. So it becomes redder as um, people discuss it as, um, visualizations are built around the topic itself. Um, and just by hovering over each, well, 
each square, each rectangle, you're able to see how many people have viewed, how many comments are there, how many data sets are in each room. Um, and you can easily just get into it and see what the discussions are, what people are saying. And um, the comments graph shows you so um, what the interactions look like. So one person um, talked about something and then what was it? Well, response to it, things like that. Um, it's really interesting. Um, so that's the agora, the public, the public space where different topics are discussed. Um, yeah. So and it's also easy to search for topics. So say we wanted to search for all the tests. There's only been one test room, um, and if you wanted to search, say for um, education, there's been no education. Um, so let me just search for something I've seen. The data zone. Um, yeah, so things like that. It makes it easy to search through the thousands of rooms um, if, if they're that many. Um, and then um, just something worth noting is that the width also um, varies and the height also varies. So the, the height would be um, so like um, a calculation of the median of all the comments they've been in all the public rooms and then um, the comments in a, in each of the rooms as a percentage of the total comments for example um, yeah so it's it's really interesting and they're still trying to refine it but um, yeah so that's a public room um, again if you have any ideas just ping them to me and I'll pass them along to them and then they have this thing called MySpace, which is sort of like your private area where you get to, let me refresh that so that it displays properly. That's weird. Okay, so before, as we hope that that works eventually, you can also browse users, um, so see everyone who's in here. Um, Sadly, I do not have sufficient, um, oh, now I do. Yesterday, this wasn't working. So you can search for users by gender or by name. And yeah, so you can see all the female, all the male users, or you can search for whoever you really want to talk to. And you can see the ones that are online. I'm alone today. Um, there's not many users online at any given time. Um, it's just the partners at this point. Um, let's try my space again. So this is like a private space. I'm just going to log out and try this again. So my space is this really cool space where you can add your own notes um, for your own use and no one else gets to see them unless you decide that you want to share them, right? Um, unfortunately, oh, now it works. That's cool. Um, so your visualizations, your test visualizations or ones that you started working on um, that you don't want to share yet any notes that you may want. So it's like a set of sticky notes that only you get to see and unless you're ready to share with everyone. And creating those is as easy as just clicking on creating a link or just creating text or creating data lets. And data lets are visualizations of data sets um, which are pulled from the transparency enhancing tool set. Um, so you can write. So I am going to now show you how to create a visualization. And I saved that for last. So in the what's new area, one of the things you get to do is share what's happening. Um, and particularly in regard to open data. So you can do that in several ways. Um, it could just be a text, um, a text message, so testing this. Um, and then you could send that. Um, interesting. It still has a few issues, so excuse that. Um, but you could also um, 
click on the folder icon and that takes you to MySpace and that allows you to either share links or any of the visualizations that you've created and so I could easily choose that. So yesterday I created um, a simple visualization just showing where the train stations in um, a small town in Dublin are and you could easily see that and it's it's also the visualizations are interactive so you could click on them and see additional information which is kind of cool um, okay and because this isn't working so I'm just going to refresh again so I can show you something else and then um, the other thing that you can do is create a visualization so I just clicked on the add data let icon and that takes you to this elaborate page um, where you get to select a data set and so you can select data sets from providers so it can pull data from the SECAN instance um, the general SECAN instance which isn't there yet um, it's a test one so it doesn't have a lot of data or one from either one of the pilots um, and um, or from Dublin which now is the Dublin one the formal Dublin um, open data portal that pulls from the transparency enhancing that is based on the transparency enhancing tool set um, so if you don't choose any all works um, that's good and you could now either at the bottom right which isn't quite the best place to put the search but, but hey um, you could search for say bins um, and you'll see that you then get all this um, data sets which if we searched for from the transparency enhancing tool set would still be able to, to see um, all of them from Dublin Yep, so this gives you six results and on SPOD we get four out of those six. Um, so if you choose one, say let's choose that one, um, it gives you, well, lists the metadata for you and then um, you could then decide that you wanted to use that data set to create a visualization and you then choose the fields that you want. Um, and after you choose the fields, um, if it had any null values in any of the fields it would have told us, then we'd have been able to filter those out um, in the um, expert mode, but because it doesn't, then we don't need to filter them out for now. Um, and then um, on the next page you get to select um, what kind of visualization you want. I am best towards maps, um, and so choose your latitude and longitude field um, yep and it will say maybe the description and okay cool so all that um, and it's, it just creates a visualization for you as you go along. You're able to see where the gaps are. For example, if there was, um, well, a point way off um, your area, then you'd be able to know to leave that out. Um, the coordinates are wrong or something like that. Um, it gives you the preview, gives you, well, the information is a bit generic, and then you're able to add that. Um, yeah, and that's shared with everyone now. So pretty simple and people can then go back, sorry about that, um, people can then comment on it, they can like it, they can um, just ask you questions. Um, if people have, say, more creative ways of presenting the data that you just shared, then they are at liberty to do that. And that's also really cool. Um, the other thing then you can do is share, well, images if you have them from your machine. Um, yeah, and that works. 
So this is the social platform for open data. It's been up for all of one year and eight days now. And um, this iteration is also very recent. Um, it's, they give, uh, they sh they've shared manuals um, for people to know how to go through um, the entire platform. It's not as easy to go. Um, to go through and test drive on your own currently. They've also embedded tweets. Um, one really cool thing you can do is wherever you are, in case you're lost, you could always click on the, um, just a question mark on the uh, top right, and then you'd be able to see just information on that page and all the wonderful things that you're able to do on a page. Um, and that goes, every, like, it explains to you everything and everywhere um, what all the pages do. So before this, they had a, oh, sorry, I forgot to talk about the co-creation room. So it's different from Agora because Agora is a public space which everyone gets to see and you get to join any discussion and contribute um, by way of visualizations or text or links from elsewhere. The co-creation room is different because you, you only get invited to projects. That's the only way you can see it. Unless you've created um, a project or you've been invited to one, you're not able to see um, the projects. And so it's for smaller groups to collaborate on specific projects. And um, in a way, this is private. It's only available to the ones that are invited to be a part of it. And in case um, the creator of the project determines that it is now time to go public, then they're able to then um, make it public, and then it will move from the co-creation to Agora, where now everyone can now see it and work on it. Um, so that's just the difference between the two. The names are also not um, set on stone. They are still brainstorming around them. And so this might change with time. One of the things that has changed um, from the previous version was they had an open wall where whether you were logged in or not, you could see updates from people and things like this. So you didn't need to log in to see everything here. But now they've changed that. Um, and you can also chat with people if anyone is online, which they're not for now. Um, and you can edit your profile, um, get mail notifications or not, manage your preferences, um, yeah, get notifications, things like that. So that's the social platform for open data. So these are um, the two tools that the pilots are working to get um, users um, on board of and to just get feedback from them so that they can continually be made better so that once they roll out to all of the EU countries, for example, then they'll be great for users to, um, to get on board on and, and just use continually. There's a third tool that I haven't mentioned and that's because it's currently um, they've only started thinking about it now that this project is in its 18th year, um, 18th month, I'm sorry. Um, so the third uh, tool will just be guide, which will be a set of recommendations. So they're going to just conduct user analysis and then on this platform. So just um, see how users engage with the data and with the platform itself. What are they clicking on? What are they keen on? Um, what don't people really understand and what, how long do people spend on any particular page. So all that analysis, um, they are going to collect all of that information and build a set of recommendations that they will then share with all the public administrations um, that are opening up the data and using the transparency enhancing tool set um, just to show them what kinds of data users are interacting with or are interested in or are creating visualizations out of, are asking questions on, things like that. So they can know how to better open up their data and um, make it more granular and what, yeah, where the gaps are. 
so that um, it's not just a give um, relationship for the public administrations, but they're also getting back feedback, so give and take, everyone is winning in the end. Um, so that's it for now. There's something else I'd like to show you guys. Um, so they just moved their code onto GitHub. They, quite, they haven't quite moved their code. They just created repositories where issues are created. Um, so they promised to move their code, but I haven't seen a lot of that. So hopefully in the coming days. Um, and then they have this data led ecosystem provider that then um, just shows people how they they are creating, well, the underlying code behind the data visualizations on SPORD, um, which is also really cool and helpful for developers like us guys. Um, so I'll just drop these links in the tech team um, channel on Slack. And I think that's it for me for now. Hello, is anybody there? Yeah, yeah thanks. That was great. Awesome. Does, does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. I hope I didn't lose you guys. Um, one, one quick question. So what kind yeah. of involvement does Open Knowledge has on this project? Um, we, we aren't doing any of the development. Um, our main mandate is to help um, build communities, active communities around these tools. So get people to know about them and then to use these tools and give feedback, um, especially during the piloting season. And then also tapping into our networks, um, just letting them know that these tools exist and just encouraging them to use these tools and um, so that the public administrations also can be encouraged and challenged to keep opening up their data um, and to be shown where the gaps are um, so that it's not just also quantity of data released, it's also the quality. Um, that's improved um, in the long run. Yeah. So our main mandate here is community. Great, thanks. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions for Sarah? Yes, yeah, Sarah, how's the... Um... Have you have you been in contact with any of the pilot partners yet? Like, have you do you know of any of the actual feedback from the people that this um, platform is supposed to be targeted towards? Um, yeah, so I have been in touch with a few of them. Um, one one of the main issues they had before was that um, most people that try and get to test out the system would mostly be government. They they had issues getting citizens to test out the system. And and when government, well, their peers in government will test out the system, then they didn't understand why this was being done. And so this is why um, it is very important to try and get them to have just citizens test out the data. Because it's like the, well, the platforms even, um, because it, it looks a lot like they are being very safe. They are always marking themselves and so um, no one can tell when the data has been extremely refined and so doesn't show the gaps or doesn't present opportunities to ask the hard questions. Um, so currently that there's very little real community around the tools so it's hard to tell what the real issues are. Um, it's mostly been small issues around um, something breaking along the way, not working as did with this presentation, um, but no real feedback at the moment. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, if there's no more questions, I guess we can call it a day on this now. Um,
Thanks for the overview, okay. Sarah. It's really good to understand what this project's about more um, and to see the ambitions of it. Um, I'm a little bit skeptical of the usability for the target audiences, but um, and I'm really interested to see what will happen um, when, when you do piloting uh, throughout the rest of the year. Yeah. Um, so just if anyone is interested in just testing the platforms also, I'm happy to help get you um, accounts and everything. So just let me know. Or if anything stood out that you'd want me to raise with them, just ping me and I'll pass it along. Oh, I actually have a question that um, would probably be of interest to Adria, but I'm not quite sure. Um... The, the aspects that they're building on CCAN, I'm not sure if um, they're writing their their um, code on top of CCAN as extensions and maybe it's published or not, but maybe like there's, um, yeah. Well, they've only just moved their code into the open on GitHub like within the last weeks because of us pressuring them. <laughs> but um, yeah. I wonder if, if they've done anything significant on CCAN that should, that should or can be contributed back to the CCAN community. Um, I, I, I will I will look at that, um, but to be honest, even with the code that they put out, it's it's very little right now. It's just bare minimum, so it's even hard to tell. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll look out for that and, and let Adria know um, before the weekend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a question too now that I think about it. Um, so the the social media platform uh, should uh -huh. basically bring together uh, like normal citizens uh, and uh, authorities, local authorities. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's what that's what it's supposed to do. And so what they've done is so that they're also able to. Um, do proper user analysis around, you know, um, general use of the tools. They've built um, different instances of these platforms for each of the pilots. Um, so that's how it's working currently. And so all, all the users that are invited to use the platforms are also people that the pilot leads know and create accounts for um, in these workshops that they hold. Um, it's not just arbitrary at this time, but yes, it's encouraging citizens to come in and use these tools. But up until this point, um, they've had trouble doing that. So they've either worked with um, business partners or just their peers within the public administrations. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. uh, like ideally, you could do something like uh, have the administration uh, propose uh, some sort of uh, change to local law, let's say, and then have people uh, come in and uh, uh, com comment on that and uh, exactly. bring data and bring data to, uh, you know, make their point. So, yeah, that, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, my, my favorite example is from Italy, where um, they are now using it to ask people, where would you want us to put up um, extra Wi-Fi routers within Prato? Because they have several, but it doesn't reach everyone, and so guys are able to contribute to conversations like that. But then at the end of the day, if not um, everyone who should be a part of a conversation is on the platform, then it sort of like beats the purpose. So that's where the real work is right now, just getting people on board. Yeah. Cool. Well, good luck. Thank you. I need it. <laughs> OK. So thanks a lot for doing this, Sarah, and um, I will work out how to um, get this recording somewhere that we can look back on and then we can decide if it's something 
can be used as material as part of the project or if we want to publish it on our YouTube channel uh, okay. or something else. Okay, so I'm